snakes have a far worse reputation than they deserve. What are snakes, and why are they the subject of so much fear and fascination? My name is Morgan, and these are just a few of my favorite snakes. I am a student at Cornell University studying animal science, and I've skipped the fear and become fascinated with reptiles and amphibians, which is the study of herpetology. I am especially fascinated with snakes, and I want to just give you a glimpse into the fascinating and amazing world of snake biology. Snakes are their own diverse order of animals in the class of reptilia. This also includes crocodilians, lizards, tuataras, and turtles. Today, there are over 3,000 described species of snakes in the world, and there are more being discovered all the time. Despite the immense diversity and habits of the snakes worldwide, they all share fundamental characteristics. Snakes are divided into five major groups that differ in their biology and especially in how they feed. There are pythons and boas, which constrict their prey. Then there are lapids and vipers, which are extremely venomous. And then finally, there are the colubrids, which tend to be the generalist of the snake species. So what makes a snake a snake? Snakes don't have legs, so they move by relying on their incredibly muscular body as well as their extreme flexibility. Snakes are vertebrates just like you and I. All vertebrates have backbones consisting of vertebrae. But where humans only have 33, snakes can have up to 200 to 400 vertebrae. Snake skin is very dry and smooth. The smoothness comes from the thousands of tiny scales which cover and protect a snake's body as well as help them grip surfaces. One of the unique things that snakes can do is shed off their entire top layer of skin all in one piece. Snakes use their tongue to smell by collecting small amounts of scent particles in the air around them. When they bring their tongue back into their mouth, it touches a structure known as the Jacobson's organ. This specialized sensory organ translates the scent particles the snake picks up in its environment into signals the brain can interpret as smells. This gives them information on what kind of prey is around them and how close. So what do snakes eat? The diet of most wild snakes consists of small rodents, other reptiles, insects, and fish. Snakes swallow their food whole, and even more incredibly, Snakes can swallow food much larger than its own head. They have special jaw adaptations that allow them to do this. The bottom portion of a snake's jaw is also not fused together like it is in humans, allowing the snake's jaw to stretch to incredible sizes. Snakes can also move the two sides of their jaws separately to grab prey and pull it down, then to use the other side of the jaw to move. So their jaws pretty much can move independently of each other. Strong body muscles helps the snake swallow and digest their meals. The throat takes up the first third of the snake's body, and once the prey passes through the throat, it enters the long, stretchable stomach. Snakes have two unique approaches to killing their prey. The first is called constriction. It involves the snake wrapping its coils tightly around its prey until the blood flow is cut off from the brain. Most colubrids, boas, and pythons are considered constrictors. The second adaptation involves the use of venom. Venom is located in two glands in the head that connect to the snake's hollow fangs. Venomous snakes use their two long hollow fangs like hypodermic needles to inject venom and quickly incapacitate their prey so the snake can have its meal. There are only four types of venomous snakes in North America. They are copperheads, rattlesnakes, coral snakes, and cottonmouths. Regardless, the reality is only some snakes are venomous. Only about 20% of known species of snakes even have the potential to kill. Even more important is that snakes prefer to retreat when encountered and only become defensive if they're threatened. When left alone, snakes present little to no danger to humans. So why should we care about snakes? What are they good for? Unfortunately, snakes are in trouble. They sometimes get a bad reputation, so they are often perceived as animals to fear and hate. That's why many snakes, even the harmless ones, are killed out of ignorance and fear. Their populations have been declining due to human activity. But perhaps the most detrimental impact on snake populations everywhere is habitat destruction. Snakes are being driven out of their native habitats to make way for highways, agriculture, and industries. Many snake species have adapted extremely well to living with humans. 
So it's about time that we adapt to live safely with them and realize that they are incredible creatures worthy of our respect and protection.